to license it. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1-64 scale 1974 Hot Wheels BMW 2002 Turbo Rally Car. Hot Wheels produced these from 2012 to the present and mine is one of the early ones made in Malaysia. I like Beamers and this one can take on the toughest roads. It's honestly not in terrible shape, but it can certainly benefit from a cleaning up with a new rally livery in the Marlboro colors. I've done some internet research and I think that's the sharpest looking one. I see some new wheels coming too. I use a bench vise for safety whenever I'm using a drill and the plastic base on this car makes it quite easy to drill out the rivets, which is step number one in disassembly. And while I wrestle with uh, taking the base off of the body, I'm giving a shout out to a new YouTube channel called Kuda's Diecast Customs. I like what he's doing. He's only got four videos up so far and has six subscribers. Can you remember when you had six? <laughs> I can. Please visit and give him some support for his brand new channel. Sub up and let's get him some traction. I'm putting a link in the description on this page so you can find him easily. I'd appreciate that and that's helping another newcomer get a good start. You can see that the few pieces involved in this model are all in pretty good condition. It's a 2012, it's only 8 years old. I've held 50 year old models in my hand on this channel. But everything's going to get cleaned up and washed and buffed and polished as always. I use this smaller portable vise when I'm drilling out the posts. I've switched to a number two drill bit and that ensures a good fit with an M2 screw which I give a test fit to and I will leave these in during the paint stripping and then the repainting process so nothing gets inside and gums up these holes. If you want a good tip for today, after you've got everything disassembled, put it all into one little basket or dish so nothing gets misplaced. Inevitably, that happens if you don't keep track of everything. Into the paint stripping gel, and I put it in this little dollar store box that closes up. And depending on the viscosity of the paint that's on there, it takes between 10 minutes and uh, overnight. While that's doing its work, I'll give you a little peek at my latest eBay haul. I'm not going to do a special unboxing video on this, but I did get everything on this table for $6, including these five Tonka toys, because Diecast Sheriff is having a birthday build off invitational on January 20th. I'll put a link in the description for that too and maybe you'll be interested to join in. Any Tonka, any scale size, that's going to be fun. This windshield cleaned up very nicely and it wasn't in bad condition but a, a dip into the Pledge Revive It floor polish always gives it that extra little glean that I'm looking for. About an hour has passed by 
and the 2002 turbo comes out and look at that the paint slides off like zombie skin there is no resistance here at all so that's always happy news for me I'm going to give it a good scrubbing up in the sink with a bristle brush and some more soapy water and when it comes back it's time for the bare metal work I use goggles it's like the bench vise it's for safety because these little Dremel wire brush attachments those bristles just fly everywhere like a mad porcupine shooting these things into your hands and your shirt they fall on the floor you step on them and you sure don't want to have an eye injury so whenever I've got a Dremel in hand no matter what attachment is on it I'm goggled up little diamond files come out because there's just a couple of casting lines on the front quarter panels that need some attention after the diamond files I switch Dremel attachments to the scotch Brite, and I'm simply revisiting where I just filed to take off any little marks or scratches and voila that will give me a much better paint results now that it's tidied up I live in Switzerland and if you are in Europe you know the BMW Museum in Munich is a very interesting multimedia interactive display changes their exhibitions all the time and I can highly recommend that to you if you're a BMW enthusiast or not I've had three beamers since living in Europe I've had two different 318s and I had a very sporty Z3 Cabrio the convertible style and they were fun to drive and I never had any trouble with any of them on top of the base brilliant white paint coat I'm going to do a second color and the masking up is time and labor intensive but it's crucial if you're going to get a good result I use the Tamiya masking tape along the fine edges where the paint will touch and then second color application is called signal red from the Vallejo selection that I have and I hit that with the airbrush that's just the tack coat but two more will go on and it gets darker and darker and this is the beautiful red finish that I ended up with I leave that for about 30 minutes and the paint is not fully dry or set it's tacky I'm careful how I hold it but off comes the masking and I'm very pleased with the sharp lines and edges that I was able to achieve here going slow taking my time and not one bit of the white base came off this is the look that I'm going for so I have made my own decals and I'm currently using a pack of blue back laser decals the advantage here if you're learning a little bit about doing your own decals is number one they're a bit more robust than the inkjet decals which are like butterfly wings and number two you don't have to clear coat this it comes through a laser printer and that saves a step and watch carefully here it's a blue backing but when applied to the white body of the car you'll see when the backing slides away beautiful a little bit of water goes on first just so I can 
wiggle that around and then the Q-tip squeegees out any air bubbles or excess water. And the most important step is this is called deco set. It's a clear transparent finish that almost melts the deco into the contours of the car because I've got some door jams and shot lines here that the decals go across and this will help it to contour to the shape of the car. And my eyesight is just fine. That's intentionally on an angle like that based on some internet research. And the number 65 is significant on this build because it's Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeover number 65. And now you're recognizing the red and white Marlboro livery. I'm not a smoker, but I like the way this one looks, and I've tried to stay true to the original. On the front is a Sony sponsorship and the BMW M3 logo. And I'll do some exterior detail with a paint pen. I'm just blocking it in here and then I'm going to go around that again with a much finer touch-up brush. BMW produced the 2002 Turbo Rally car and remember 2002 was the model number not the year from 1974 to 1981. It was powered by a BMW M31 four-cylinder engine with a single overhead camshaft rear wheel drive and it put out 170 horsepower. You can recognize them by the distinctive bolted on extended wheel arches so this Hot Wheels model is fairly true to the original car. But in all honesty it saw little success as a rally car in the Trans Am series under 2 liter class at that time dominated by Alfa Romeo, Porsche and Datsun with the best finish being a 34th place in 1975. Well, my little turbo is all back together now. No issues to report to you. Wheels are spinning. It's still a good runner. Let's have a closer look. I like the wheels. That made a difference. Detailing on the front and minimal decals on takeaway and the back is almost untouched. There's no need for a license plate on a rally car, but the tail lights were done in a slightly different red. There's the base that I just scrubbed and washed. Nothing else was done to it. And all in all I have produced a fairly accurate rally car. It zooms off. It was kind of plain and ordinary looking when I began. And some paint chips and it was well loved. The wheels had had it. What a difference. Don't you like that? I think those are brilliant colors. Especially with the Marlboro diagonals on that livery. It goes into a gift bag like all the rest of my models do. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And why not become a new subscriber to my channel and hit that notification bell. Remember to visit Kuda's Diecast and the Diecast Sheriff with links in the description. It's coffee time. Thank you.